Hello, this is the RPG Crawler, and welcome to another Shelf of Many Things, where I take a look at independent and small press role-playing games. This time I'm taking a look at something a little bit different, at least from my channel, in that it's a rules light take on a system that I hadn't actually properly played before. Cepheus Light from Stella Gamma Publishing is a rules light sci-fi role-playing game based on the Cepheus engine, which itself is an OGL-style version of the classic Mongoose 2D6 Traveler system. Stella Gamma was kind enough to send me a copy of this, and actually a few other systems based on the same SRD, and I'll try to take a look at those as I can. This one does come available as a PDF from DriveThruRPG, as well as a print-on-demand from Lulu. As always, I will cover the physical presentation and layout, give a summary of the contents of the book proper, and then wrap up with my evaluation of both the system and the book itself. With that said, my earlier comment about not having played the original material is relevant. While I am vaguely familiar with the concepts of the Traveler system and how it relates to derivative games, I don't have the breadth of knowledge of the system that a longtime fan might have, so take this review as being from someone who is new to the system, and bear with me if I point out anything that's the same as the core SRD presents, rather than just the differences. With that out of the way, let's begin. Written by Omer Golan Joel and Josh Peters, Cepheus Light was released back in 2018, with this video utilizing the third print run, released in 2020. It is a high-action sci-fi RPG that is generally compatible with the other Cepheus engine offerings. Available in the aforementioned PDF and print versions, Cepheus Light clocks in at about 180 pages of content, with a full color cover and black and white interior. The print version is a basic letter-sized paperback with a kind of mixed quality on the print, but it is passable and it gets the job done. Interior design is incredibly simple, with a standard two-column black and white layout with occasional inline illustrations and tables. The game is rather table-heavy at times, but the tables are well laid out where they appear, if somewhat simple in design, and therefore easy to reference. In fact, generally speaking, the entire layout seems to go to a uh, kind of a minimalist design style, which, you know, if organizes effectiveness over presentability, and honestly, that's the sort of feel that the system itself seems to be going for, and I kind of like it. The black and white illustrations where they appear are fairly simple and well selected, being a mix of pretty much what you'd expect from a sci-fi genre. And you know what? This reminds me of 90s era RPG art as far as I'm concerned, and that's a good thing in my eyes. You know, sometimes you get kind of pulp sci-fi stuff like that. Sometimes you get more gritty, realistic designs. Organizationally, the system write-up is fairly straightforward. In many rules light systems, there's an implicit assumption that the player is at least passingly familiar with the core system, and, you know, they may gloss over elements of systems that really should be gone into. And uh, I was pleasantly su surprised to see that this isn't the case with Cepheus Lights. While hand-holding is at a minimum and a premium is placed on brevity, even my quick initial scan of the system kind of garnered at least the basics, even though I was not familiar with the source material. On towards the actual contents themselves, Cepheus Light is organized into roughly 11 chapters and two appendices. After the introduction, there is a character creation section, which goes into a uh, details on, you know, basically creating each character. There is a brief section covering skills, then an equipment section. Combat rules follow, then rules for off-world travel, trade, and smuggling, since they're such integral parts of the material. There's spaceship design and construction that follows. After a list of common spacecraft details, there's the rules for space combat, a guide to creating and mapping worlds, and finally the various environmental hazards a character can run into. The first appendix, covers alien species and psionics, while the second simply lists inspiration material in the tradition of old Appendix N. The book closes out with various legal material. In detail, the introduction briefly details what role-playing games are, as well as the background of Cepheus Light itself. There's also some discussion of the dice conventions and the core game mechanics within it. 
Cepheus Light uses only D6s, and the core mechanic is a simple roll of 2D6 plus any modifier versus a difficulty target. The character generation rules follow. Cepheus Light uses six primary ability scores, each of which serves as a sort of default skill. There's strength, dexterity, endurance, intelligence, education, and social standing, with each ability score being a randomly generated total ranging from 2 to 12. There's some optional character generation rules for different styles of game, and then an example of the universal personal profile and pseudo-hexadecimal numbers, which is sort of a shorthand way to reference characters. I am told that this actually comes from the core system, so I suppose it's good to see it preserved in Cepheus Light. Character creation then gives a basic set of skill options for characters based on what sort of homeworld they originate from, followed by the career section. Cepheus Light is a skill-based game rather than a class-based one, but the character's initial career represents what they did before becoming an adventurer. This allows for a semi-random accumulation of skills, wealth, and contacts, but not without some risk. You can proceed through careers multiple times, allowing for potentially more skills at the cost of years and risking permanent injury or death. Yes, each career has a survival role, which you must make if you go through it, and if you fail, it means you have died during character creation. Brutal. The career tables follow, with each career having a name, a brief description, the roles against each stat that you need to qualify for it, survive it, advance within it, and to re-enlist if you wish. This is followed by ranks, which give a set of skills and resources that can be acquired if you muster out at that rank, then a list of skills and training that you can acquire during each term of service. After these career tables, the rules for actually mustering out are given, including default bonuses as well as a potential benefits if you end up working in a career for several terms, and aging rules in case you're tempted to have a character work at a career path past their early 30s before going to adventuring. The character creation chapter concludes with a few pages of examples of detailed character creation. And this is actually a theme in this book. There's a lot of really detailed examples for each step of play almost. The skills chapter follows, and by contrast with many more rules-heavy systems, the skills merely get a brief description of what falls under their purview. Basic language rules follow, as well as rules for skill advancement, which characters are allowed to a expend experience that you gain during gameplay to improve each skill after a game has started. The equipment chapter is rather extensive, as tends to be the case with sci-fi games. Like many multi-world or multi-genre style systems, there's this concept of tech levels, which you know will determine what you can get on each world, since not all worlds are equal in terms of technology possessed. Thus, you can have your star systems with worlds ranging from barbarians or Stone Age societies, all the way up to more advanced tech than even your average spacefaring civilization, or for instance, lost alien ruins or the like. Cepheus Light also abstracts equipment into an item per strength rating system that seems so common in rules like games when you're dealing with encumbrance. It also generally abstracts cost into basic credit costs as well, rather than any particular sort of uh, currency system. Each section of the equipment chapter has a table that covers what the section deals with, as well as descriptions of each item on the list, including the required tech level to acquire the item where applicable. The first section goes over living expenses by quality, then personal armor is described, with each armor offering a certain amount of protection points, and some requiring a particular skill or a particular level to use. After the armor types are lists of cybernetic augmentations, such as uh, what you might expect in a more cyberpunk game, as well as their costs and tech level, with a limit on how many implants a character can have listed in the section head. The personal equipment section follows with your basic adventuring gear, from backpacks and canteens all the way through higher technology gear, such as scanners, night vision, and portable computers. Pharmaceuticals follow, which offer a variety of effects and curatives, and then basic robots and drones are described, along with this cute little robot kind of illustration. Kind of thing I'd expect on the box of something that you buy. The next section describes land vehicles, and this part is more complex, having some basic information on the vehicles and some basic rules on how they interact with weapons, specifically vehicle mounted versus personal weapons. Finally, there's the weapon section itself, with a list of special weapon abilities listed first, then weapons ranging from basic melee weapons to firearms, all the way up to heavy support weapons. 
This is kind of an impressive range, allowing for use of armaments and tech levels from the Stone Age all the way to the far future. A chapter detailing combat rules follows, or at least personal and ground vehicle combat rules, since space combat has its own section. Cepheus Light uses a six second combat round structure and starts with the rules for determining surprise, allowing for a potential free combat round to those who get surprised. And then initiative, which is a simple tactics check. During combat, characters can perform up to two actions out of a list of five general options, ranging from movement to attacking to trying to influence your group's throws. Rules for melee combat and ranged combat follow, with options for various styles of weapon fire, rules for aiming, and similar optional effects are given. Combat in Cepheus' system largely relies on a simple skill test to see if you hit, without consideration for dodging or evasion, unless the optional dodging and parrying rules are used. It's all just considered as a test of your aim. There are grapple rules which are fairly straightforward and offer a variety of options. The rules for suffering damage and healing follow, including optional rules to adjust the damage a character or their opponents can take, which is useful for portraying different styles of sci-fi adventure. The chapter has a few pages of detailed examples of combat as well, before covering the vehicle rules, which is after the personal combat examples, as I said, they are pretty detailed. Vehicular combat takes into account the difference between handheld weapons versus support weapons, and the vehicle weapon uh, and starship weapons are, diff are different levels as well. However, it also has rules for collisions, maneuvering, knocking out a vehicle, and repairing them, which are all useful in the sort of high-action vehicle chases that you might see in the genre. Off-world travel is covered in the next chapter, a fairly important thing in a space exploration-based sci-fi game. There's some interplanetary travel rules that give various estimated times for places within a system, and then interstellar rules, which utilize a sort of jump-style idea, with starships connected by plots that move from system to system, and ships capable of crossing a certain number of jumps based on their engine rating. After the basic explanation of uh, space travel itself, information on the finances of basically mortgaging a ship and crewing a ship follow, as well as descriptions of the various crew positions. Fuel costs, port fees, life support, and other maintenance fees follow. The expenses are followed by a section about revenue, thankfully enough, with various ticket costs and potential freight costs. Information on the ship's computer follow, and then rules for encountering various vessels in space are given, including a sort of a random encounter table or that you can use either as it is or as an example for your particular section of space. The chapter on trade and smuggling follows, which gives some basic rules for engaging in trade and hauling goods. They aren't complex, but a few tables are given for various types of goods and the difficulty in finding and transporting them. The section on starship design and construction, by contrast, is a little bit more complex, allowing you to choose from different hull and armor configurations, drives, and components. It's rather chart-heavy and is more than I should get into in a simple review, but it makes for a fairly high degree of starship customization, as well as giving rules for refitting a ship after the fact and an example of design at the end. This is followed by a chapter on common spacecraft, simply giving a list of the various stat blocks for various common ship types that one might encounter, ranging from the small to the absolutely huge capital ships. Each ship is described in terms of tech level and general description, followed by a chart with a type, tonnage, armor, hull type, fuel required, uh, thrust, computer and armaments, crew quarters and other gear installed, and finally a cost to build that particular ship, as well as the time it might take to make. The chapter on space combat follows, and where it differs from basic vehicle combat is in its scale. Not only the scale of the combat area, but also in regards to the crew having individual and more complex actions within the ship itself. There is no initiative. Combats instead take place simultaneously in space, with uh, some modifiers involved for whatever side has the advantage at that particular moment. There's also rules for when various locations of a ship are hit, as well as how to repair them. The chapter closes with, once again, a fairly extensive example of ship-to-ship -ship combat. The world generation rules are in the next chapter, and they 
provide basic guidelines for describing worlds in a universal world profile, which is similar to the character profile in terms of being a string of numbers and uh, letters. It describes the elements of the world in a series of digits, including a starport type, world size, atmosphere, hydrographics, population, government, law level, and tech level. The meaning of each rating and element are laid out in the following pages. After these ratings are detailed, other various aspects of each world, including trade, systems that have a military bases, allegiances, and communication, trade routes, and such follow. Again, the chapter closes out with a relatively detailed example of using that particular uh, set of rules. The final main chapter of the book covers environmental hazards, basically dangers that a character can be exposed to on various worlds, such as extreme temperatures, poison, radiation, falling in various gravity types, and so forth. The rules covering each are listed in brief, along with any relevant tables. Finally, there's the appendices. The Aliens and Psionic Appendix starts with a number of alien species detailed, along with rules for creating and running them as characters. There's also, you know, fairly typical of classic alien types you might see in very generic sci-fi settings. There's the reptilians, the insectoids, and then the gray aliens. The psionic rules are fairly simple, requiring a number of psi points to activate and are described in simple paragraphs divided into a number of major talents. The source of inspiration appendix, which follows, is a list of books, movies, and games that can be looked into to inspire different types of campaigns. It's not terribly extensive, but it gets the job done. The book closes with a legal section describing not only the OGL that's required of the Cepheus compatible material, but also helpfully a notice on how to publish things compatible specifically with the Cepheus light system. So what do I think about Cepheus light? Well, in terms of presentation, I do appreciate the cover art being a relatively generic space theme, although I do feel like the title could have used some sort of stylized logo or font to help it stand out. I've already gone over what I feel about the interior layout and art, and I hold a great appreciation for the sort of style that the black and white art selection represents. The writing is technically accurate, which is a plus since I didn't find myself fussing over basic language misuses and typos. And while brief, both descriptions and write-ups of the rules were easy to read and conveyed all of the information necessary without a lot of hand-holding. I do appreciate the lengthy examples of each area of play, and they offer a few clarifications within them where the rules might be misinterpreted or are very vague. I think that more systems could stand to benefit from these sorts of examples, even if they add to the page count in more complex rule sets. The system itself being well-written and well-organized was of great benefit to me, who has never really gotten into the source systems that inspired Cepheus Light. I found them easy to follow, and I played a short game just to get the idea of the system itself, and uh, I, I really enjoyed it. Those who have watched my channel know that I'm not actually the greatest fan of sci-fi gaming in general. There is, however, one massive exception, one which I've mentioned on my streams when I initially you know, took a look at the systems that Stella Gama sent me. That is, I am a fan of star crawling and trading style video games, similar to the old Wing Commander Privateer series or Rebel Galaxy. As such, Cepheus Light has really intrigued me and actually made me wish that I'd looked at Mongoose's Traveler back in the day, especially where it supports that style of play in a tabletop format. Maybe that has me a bit biased a bit, but remember, I'm approaching this as someone who hasn't played this particular overarching family of systems before for any length of time. But I want to say that I enjoy what I've seen so far and what I've played so far. The system itself plays quickly despite having the hallmarks of one of the more complex systems, with the skill systems and combat resolving relatively fast, even for those who are relatively new to the game. The most complex part of the system is the ship design, but that is enjoyable in and of itself. As a task, that it, it will be rarely done by the players, but it is relatively long-lasting, allowing one to customize the ship that the party shares, you know, at least until they wreck it. Overall, I am rather pleased with the Cepheus light system. It strikes me as what I presume is a nice balance between old-school OSR simplification and a more complex system overall. I got the same feel of running it as I would running something like Swords and a Wizardry for a D&D style game, and that's a plus and probably not entirely coincidental. For those who are looking for something even more rules light, suitable less for campaign play and more for a one-shot or limited play, there's also 
Cepheus faster than light, an even more stripped down and simplified version in a compact format that can be useful to grab and play on the go. I might end up covering it in a separate video sometime, or actually I might bundle it with a few others because I had one of this, a sci-fi one, or a, a post-apocalyptic one, and then a fantasy one. They're all based on the same system by the same people, so I might actually do a video covering all three of them. But for now, we'll focus on this one. I do recommend it for those who are looking for a travel or experience, but who are really kind of more in tune with the OSR style gaming. It does that marvelously, and I'm actually really impressed. On that note, I'm going to wrap it up here. This has been the RPG Crawler with Shelf of Many Things, Cepheus Light. As always, I'll put some links to where you can pick it up below. If you like what you've seen, remember to leave a like, comment if you got any feedback, and subscribe for more RPG content, both tabletop and computer. Until next time, take care and goodbye. And if you are still watching, I would like to take the opportunity to thank my supporters, the top tiers of which are listed on the screen, without whose support I would not have been able to offer the variety of content that I have on this channel throughout the years. If you're feeling particularly generous and would like to join them, you can support the channel. There are a variety of options to do so. I have a Patreon, a Subscribestar, as well as channel memberships enabled. If you are not in a position to contribute, simply leaving a like, a comment, or sharing my videos are all wonderful ways to help the channel grow without spending a dime and are all greatly appreciated.